Um, right. <clears throat> my name's Martin Hemmings. I'll just introduce myself first. Um, I'm a freelance translator. Um, I've been a freelance translator for about three, three and a half years now. I did the um, MA in translating here at Salford, which uh, I did in 2001. I'd actually already started working as a freelancer before I did um, the MA in translating, but um, felt that still it was something that I wanted to do, it was something that I wanted to have uh, under my belt. Um, prior to that I was a school teacher, um, which was a very bad idea. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, just, just off, off topic, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're a good linguist, I wouldn't recommend secondary school teaching as a way to, uh, as a way to further your career in languages. Um, anyway, um, I work um, French and Russian into English. Those are my, those are my two languages. Um, Actually, funnily enough, I thought the majority of my work would be in Russian, but it actually turns out that about 95% of my work is French. I, I do very little Russian at the moment, um, which is kind of fine because I can I can process French a lot quicker as well as you know it's kind of easier to do Russian. So all those kind of things kind of help with productivity. Um, in terms of uh, a lot of people have been talking about sort of the pros and cons of specialisms and that kind of thing. Now, I was a language graduate, I did French and Russian BA, then I was a teacher, and then I was a translator. So really I had no, you know, the only thing that I was really kind of strong at was languages. Um, so I didn't really have a specialism going into it, I just kind of felt my way into it really. And I started off with very basic stuff, um, you know, tourist kind of material, birth certificates, uh, I know I think the, the, the people from Big World said that you know you give that kind of material to to um, you know fresh brand new translators and, and that's the kind of stuff that <clears throat> that I did as well as, as Sylvia said marketing myself on the internet off the internet you know carpet bombing uh, agencies with my CV but always an individual email for each agency you know and that was a good piece of advice as well um, which. Um, which you should definitely follow. So I've just, I've just fallen into my kind of three areas of specialism by accident, really. Uh, one of them is, is website localization, and I do a lot of that, um, that kind of work. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of quite computer savvy. I can manipulate HTML code and that kind of thing as well. So all of that helps. Um, and also, I did my MA dissertation on that, and I'm potentially going to look to be doing um, a PhD in that area as well in the future in, in web localization. Um, so that's my kind of central area of interest. And really through the other um, things that people have sent me, you know, people have just sent me texts, can you do this? And I've had a look at it and I'm, you know, occasionally, I mean obviously if it's something completely, you know, if it's very, very technical or medical or legal, you know, I don't touch them with a barge pole. But you, you learn by doing sort of semi-specialist texts over time and then you pick up bits of vocab and you start to remember them and then you're more confident to take on more specialist and more technical things in that field. So for no reason other than by accident I tend to work in transport and urban planning uh, and environment and waste management. Those are, those are my, my two specialist areas which I seem to get a lot of work in. Now I also have one big uh, French, uh, French uh, manufacturing client that makes uh, roller blinds, awnings and skylights. Now, I mean, I knew absolutely nothing about those before I started being a, a translator, but obviously just literally through working through those things for a couple of years, you, you do kind of get your specialism that way. Um, I just wanted to talk briefly, I don't know how much time I've got, but a couple of minutes. Um, okay. Um, really, I just wanted to highlight the fact that, I mean, you know, freelance translation, I don't do any interpreting, um, out of choice, really. Um, I like writing, I like manipulating written word, and I also like the fact that, yes, you do work to tight deadlines as a freelance translator, but you do have the opportunity to think over things a little bit more than you do if you're an interpreter. You know, consider things, come back to something later on if you come up with a better idea for it 2,000 words later. You know, you come back to it again. Um, but I just wanted to really stress that if you do want to be a freelance translator, and various people have mentioned these different things, it's really not just about 
being able to translate well or being able to write well in your, uh, you know, in your native tongue. Um, obviously, you need to be very organised in terms of managing all of your uh, post uh, purchase orders, um, you know, incoming files, the files you're working on, managing separate outgoing files, keeping all of them separate, creating different folders for different clients, um, you know, managing job codes, all that sort of administrative stuff. Um, you do have to kind of be very, very savvy about that. Otherwise, you just you just drown in masses and masses of TM files and purchase orders and invoices, and you don't have a clue where they come from. And I I found that out very quickly. Now I don't I'm, I don't work for or I'm not employed by the company that makes this piece of software. But if you do go into freelance translation, uh, there's an excellent piece of software called Translation Office 3000. Now I don't know if anyone's heard of it. Um, but it is an exceptional piece of software and I could not do my job without it. it all